Obviously we are mainly known for our horizontal five axis machines. We thought it as a natural thing to bring to our market a no high quality four axis machine on the larger scale. We get 500 millimeter pallet, rising up to an 800 millimeter pallet. So welcome to this week's MTD CNC podcast. I'm Paul Jones, the Managing Director and Founder of MTD. Uh, today, uh, it's a real privilege actually, today's podcast, because I'm here at the headquarters of Grob here in the UK, which is actually in Birmingham, right near the NEC. Um, but it's the this, it's this sort of second time we've been uh, talking about Grob today, because earlier we were at Luff Engineering, a company that's just recently um, taken delivery of a, a G350 Grob horizontal five axis machine. So we're going to talk about that in today's podcast. Uh, I can, uh, I'm can. i pleased to say that I'm joined by two gentlemen from Grob. Uh, one is um, Lewis Hill and the other is Paul Reeves. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Lewis. We'll start with yourself. How are you doing? You're okay? Good afternoon, Paul. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very well, very well. Paul, um, obviously we've been with you all day today at, at Luff as well. Uh, you're obviously keeping well. Yeah, I'm, I'm very good, thank you, Paul. And excited to talk about the, the Grob machines on today's podcast. Absolutely, yeah, welcome to Grob. Good, good. And we're going to be talking about some new products that have uh, been launched as well during to today's show. Uh, I'm also joined by Gio from MTD, and uh, again, I've had the privilege of being with you all day as oh, well Paul, today. Paul, how are you doing? Right. Very good, thank you. Very good. Um, so, gentlemen, let's uh, we'll talk about the things that we are going to touch on. So, we'll talk about Luff, the installation of the machine. There is a great few videos that are coming to the channel very soon about that installation. But for people that prefer to listen to podcasts, we'll go into detail about that here today. We're also going to talk about the new range of uh, four-axis machines that are about to come to the market and the new uh, five-axis universal machining center, the G150. So that's all coming up in today's podcast. So firstly, um, Lewis, let's start with yourself uh, talking about the um, Luff engineering installation. Now, um, I've been with Paul this morning there, and it was really good to see a machine like a Grob machine in what I'd class as a general subcontract machine shop. This is something that's a, a, a bit of an ambition now for Grob, isn't it? It's something that you're really looking to expand upon here in the UK. Yes, Paul, uh, we're very, very proud to sell the machine into Luff Engineering. Um, I sit tier supplier within the automotive industry, and this is one of our main focuses in Grob uh, worldwide, but particularly Grob UK. Um, we want to be known not just for OEM uh, automotive and high level um, five axis machining. Um, we have got a range of machines that are suitable and achievable financially for a number of uh, different industries, and which has been shown today at Luff. Um, and that was really apparent in in uh, talking to the guys there. How, you know, how they were blown away by the technology, um, and even more blown away by the price and the affordability of of the machine. And um, Paul, you you got involved uh, in in this in the sale of the machine from from the start, really. Um, how did you go about convincing the guys there that actually it was an affordable product, or was it as easy as saying, look, you know, look at the price tag? Uh, yeah, really, it, it was the price tag that was the, was the driver for this. Um, Jason had got a wish list of a grub on his, you know, a grub machine was on his wish list of achievements to try and get. Uh, and then, obviously, when he put a, we discussed what he was looking to spend, budgets that were available. Um, with Lewis's help, we found a machine that we could, you know, do a deal on, and the rest, it, it just ran through really smoothly. And I mean, you know, Gio's always excitable, but this morning he was, you know, at, at its max, really. When we were talking to Jason about the fact he'd already got five axis machines there on site, but with the new Grob machine, he was achieving far better machining results with that machine, wasn't he, than compared to his sort of traditional method of five axis machining. And we put that down to really to build the stability of that, of that Grob machine with a horizontal uh, spindle, the fact it's in that tunnel, all of those factors, wasn't it? It's quite impressive to hear. I think it was a brilliant um, visit this morning um, at Luff, and um, it was a, a different configuration uh, fifth axis that we've seen at Brave, which was another fantastic uh, story. Um, but for me, yeah, Paul, I mean, he's achieving better surface finish now, 
better tool life longevity already, so he's making instant savings. He's got lots of different benefits um, than he's had before. Um, and he's also got um, a twin pallet um, on this machine tool. Now, it's very rare, guys, isn't it, to see a fifth axis machine with a twin pallet. Um, you know, you've got lots of fifth axis machine tools in the marketplace, but to have that ca ca capacity and capability is another benefit. Yeah, all of our all of our five axis machines can be specified from from new with obviously a single pallet, a twin pallet option, um, a multi pallet option for one machine, or even a linear pallet system to connect multiple machines in. Um, it was come from our design. Uh, it was always um, one of our key uh, factors in designing the machine to make it automotive uh, up to make it automation friendly, and we we, we achieved that, and also we achieved that with our own products as well, so they're not third-party products all the time. We can integrate third-party products, but we can also uh, sell grob, rotary systems, uh, linear systems to, to suit all applications, really. And I thought it was it was great to go in there. When you looked beyond the grob machine, there was a lot of used machinery in there, isn't there, Paul, that he's, he's had for many, many years. So it, it must be great for Jason to walk in his machine shop now and be presented with something as, as kind of as sophisticated as as what he's got there and with the with the fact that he's been supported by you with it with the Siebel scheme as well pretty much means he's got almost interest free or free machining for a, for a 12 month period doesn't it he can't really fail can he no that that was one of the drivers as well um, the machines that he got in there one of the machines that he was putting a lot of the work through was was letting him down it, it was becoming unreliable it was running up expensive repair bills plus loss of production so that was part of the justification that was put through with the finance company that if he had this machine he would be saving X amount in repair costs and downtime uh, and obviously it made the, the purchase of the new machine a much easier decision for him to press ahead with. And even the, even down to the installation he said that that was a you know a massive success as well um, to you know you don't have to bolt these machines to the floor do you they're all kind of like in one you know, neatly packaged area. There's no accessories spilling out around the sides of the machine. So, um, you know, it looked pretty tidy. Yeah, I mean, all we needed from Jason was a suitable air supply, suitable power supply. Our engineers put the machine into position, uh, a little bit of left and right. Uh, and then, you know, he was in production later that week. I think this is a really good story, and I think this is a really good way of uh, putting across. We, we've had many done many videos and talked about machines, uh, grob machines, but I think this is a real, this is the first one I've been into as an example, and I know there is a lot more, but the first one I've seen of someone that, you know, has said to me, you know, I didn't really think I'd be able to achieve what I've got here. So it's a really good result for you guys and great for um, Luff as well. So let's let's look at these two products now. Um, and Lewis, we'll come back to you. I want to talk about this four axis machining centre range because Again, as, from my experience, I've known Grob for a long time, the five-axis machines in the automotive sector. Um, but where's this machine going to fit, and what is the range? Could you elaborate? Yeah, so obviously we are mainly known for our horizontal five-axis machines. Uh, we thought it as a, a natural thing to bring to our market or, and our customers um, a four-axis range of machines as well, so high-quality four-axis machine. Uh, on the larger scale, I guess, with uh, the, 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 the small machine currently would be a 500 millimeter pallet, rising up to a 630 millimeter pallet, and then an 800 millimeter pallet on top of that. And you know, wh wh where's the market for these for you? When you look at where your supply machines at the moment, wouldn't someone just go actually? I'd rather just go for a five axis instead of the four, or is or is, or is there a market specifically for that type of machine? There's, there still is a market for that particular type of machine, and uh, there's a market for four axis machining supporting five axis machining. So, um, obviously, there is a, a price difference between four and five axis machines, and we are seeing a lot of uh, high end machining companies not always finishing the machine or not always roughing the parts out on a five axis machine. So, they'll rough out on a four axis machine transfer it to the five axis for the more finishing uh, processes. I suppose there's an argument to say, um, Lewis, that not everyone requires full fifth axis anyway. And, and, I, and I'm assuming um, that you're going to be having a larger Y axis stroke on the fourth axis, so you can fixture it up with big columns, present more components to the spindle. And yep. if you're doing that on a cube, you can do six-sided work 
you know, you do your three up, three ups on one side, then you flip your part around and do your other three sides. So, uh, from a production uh, perspective, you could be fixturing up that pallet to produce lots of parts and use it as a as a tombstone kind of setup. Yeah, exactly. And the, the, there's many components that do not require, as you say, geo. Many components that don't, still don't require five axis. So. There's plenty of uh, opportunities out there for a four-axis machine in in the market of, of a quality uh, or from a quality brand. And the Y-axis? Yes, we we've got um, a standard Y-axis, but we also can have each machine comes with an option of getting an extended Y-axis again, so we can have a bigger tombstone on the uh, on the B-axis and load more more parts or longer parts potentially on the uh, on the machine. Uh, and now and now here's some facts that you know maybe our audience listening won't know, but Really important to know that um, in Germany you have a 180,000 square meter facility, I believe. It may have even grown since yep. when I read that, I don't know, but um, supplying over 2,000 machines a year approximately into the global market. So that's some, some quantity. Employing 5,000 people, or just about 5,000 people in Germany. Um, that says something about you know the heritage, and you're still a family owned company as well, right, you, since yeah. the early. Um, 20th century that that you know there's a lot of skill sets within there to be able to develop um, and innovate uh, you know a significant level isn't that correct obviously we we believe it's the largest machine tool facility in Europe in, in one facility basically um, but Grob being family owned uh, we're now in the third generation of the, of the Grob family um, and very very forward thinking and very very diverse so when there's an opportunity uh, arises we can move very quickly to develop the products of the future uh, to deliver the product into the markets of the future basically uh, one thing that I'd, I'd like to mention is the, the the link with Grob and the automotive industry uh, we're very very uh, well known in the automotive machining industry and on internal combustion engine but 10 years ago uh, the Grob board and family recognized that there was an onset of e-mobility coming uh, internal combustion engine would be a dropping uh, considerably and there'd be more motor assembly, electric drive unit assembly and uh, battery assembly so we now offer a range of uh, equipment and assembly equipment for that, 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 that kind of market so we can we can wind the motors of the future for the motor vehicle, we can build the batteries of the future for the, the motor vehicle and also we're still uh, pushing forward with, with, with technology and trying to develop production uh, methods for hydrogen fuel cell. Mm -hmm. So Grob as a machine to company, yes, but as a, as a forward-thinking developer of technology for um, the new automotive industry, we, we, we're doing this as well. And is that all happening in Germany, in the site that I talk about? It is, yes, but it's it's, it's rolled out. So we, we, we do all our development work in, in our plant in Germany, but then we roll that out to the, the plants worldwide. So um, e-mobility can be built in Germany, can be built in the US, uh, Brazil, uh, China, and also our Italian plants as well, in, in a, which look in purely at motor winding. And Paul, you, you've been to the uh, facility in Germany I talk about. I know you've, you, your time at Grob has been less than, um, than, than Lewis's, but impressive, somewhere that people should go? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a mind blown facility and we have the, the TAS technical centre there, which obviously is producing customer demos day in, day out, week in, week out. So yeah, it's, it's certainly somewhere to get out and have a look at. I'd like to go myself one day, guys. So, so uh, yeah, keep keep me in mind, please. Now, Lewis, well, that last March, you guys were coming, but with, with the onset <laughs> yeah. of this bloody pandemic, uh, it didn't it didn't happen. Well, you don't find you. Yeah. Well, I, I think I'd make make an effort. I might go by boat. I'm not sure. <laughs> Get in the drive. Uh, I, um, I just want to go back to a point. Really, you you mentioned the uh, automotive industry and and your your kind of um, relationship that you've got with most of the big OEMs. Um, now your machine tool was designed for predominantly that sector um, and now with the, the combustion engine kind of coming to its end at some point in the future, you will probably lose sales to that marketplace. However, you're bringing out these new products um, and the fifth axis machine which has been a proven machine within that sector, you've really found new markets, it lends itself to all other sectors and with automation how it's accelerated due to COVID isn't there now a, a, a greater opportunity 
opportunity than ever before to really kind of get these machines out to to lots of different sectors that maybe have not really been on your radar. There is, yes, there's a big big shift as well with um, the OEM not doing so much machining on um, ancillary parts within the engine and ancillary parts within the motor vehicle. So there's a big focus now on tier suppliers, tier one, tier two suppliers um, with regard to new technology of machining. So where there used to be A and B pillars of the, the car were, were pressings, they're now high pressure die castings which are machined. Uh, these high pressure die castings can be fairly fairly sizable for uh, one 1.6 meter 2 meter uh, work pieces and that that kind of market needed a, a very very agile um, flexible machine uh, which was not so heavyweight because it was only doing trimming and punching of holes uh, so we've also developed a range for frame structure machining as well so whereas our, our market may be changing uh, we're always developing the machines of the future to, to, to combat with the or combat the change in those markets so we do see a very very uh, good future for Grob uh, in both machining and assembly. And, and still looking at these uh, the horizontals we'll, we'll move on to the new G150 shortly but this the build of these new range of horizontals is it does it fit into the same sort of you know uh, mechanical dynamicness as your your other range of five axis like the G uh, 150 that we'll talk about the G350 and the 550 is is the fundamentals in the build of the machine similar? Yes. The so so the, the 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 dynamics of the machine will be will be high. The accuracy of the machine will be be high as well, and the the general build quality of the machine is obviously going to be a traditional grog machine, uh, oversized ball screws, oversized rails, um, built for the demanding challenges that we'll be faced with. When they're going to be available? Uh, from March this year. Okay, so just around yep. the corner. Right, let's pick up on the G150. So we've seen the G350 this morning um, with yourself, Paul and Gio. Um, Paul, tell me about the, the G150. Well, the, the G150 is it's a new machine to grab. Obviously, it's there to complement the 350, the 550, and the big brother, the 750. Um, it's the smallest machine in the range. Um, predominantly aimed at sort of more to try and get into the medical market, I think, is, is the main driver for that machine. Um, it's a nice compact footprint machine, um, but with all the same benefits as the, the bigger 350, 550 and 750. So table upside down, machining, swarf fall away, e exact, ton exactly design. the same fundamentals as, the, as the, the bigger machines, just on a smaller scale. And would there be then, um, a, it, it's going to cost less than a 350, it's going to, you know, the, the price tag is going to be lower because of the... Yeah, it, it, it's obviously priced within the range. Um, it's a it's it's a slightly cheaper machine, um, but gives you all the quality um, that you'd expect and the build from a grub. And now, is there anything unique about this? Does anybody else do a machine of this size with that tunnel design? It's the smallest horizontal machine available. Okay. So yeah, we're, it's it's a unique machine to grub for that particular size, offering the horizontal spindle. And do you think the fact that other people have tried to adopt this, a similar method of creation of machine um, is nothing but really an endorsement for what Grob have done? Maybe this is a question for you, Lewis, over the years. Yes, obviously um, we, we, we do see more and more machines coming to market with a, with a similar concept to ours. And uh, because it does have many benefits, uh, the, the other machines or companies can see those benefits and want to tap into those as well. So. And the G150, when will, that, when will that be available? And maybe just quickly... Um, go through, and maybe we'll come back to you, Paul. The, the the sort of size, the capacity of the 150 compared to the bigger machines, so people can visualise how big the machine is. Well, the the 150 has a 370 mil pallet size. Um, it, it's rough size is kind of physical size is about five meters by two meters floor space. Um, it's available with various spindles, and also you can get various control options on it. It's available with. Fanek, Heidenhain, and Siemens controls. And, and one of the things about the um, the 350 we saw at Luff this morning is the fact that you, the, the, I think that I can't remember the tool capacity that you had, but there was quite a few options in in adding to that, wasn't there? Even even retrofitting is that something that's that's cap you know you're capable of doing on this on this range too? Yeah, we can add the uh, the, the extended tool magazines to the machines. Yeah. Okay. Um, other options that would come with it that would be uh, you know really lend themselves to the market that we're probably talking about here in the in the subcontract arena high pressure coolant 
um, swarf extraction, filtration, all of those things come with these machines or are they things that you have to purchase in, in addition to both? No, it, it all comes standard with the machine. So standard generally is 38 bar. Obviously, we have options then to, to step up to 60 or 80 bar pressures. Um, swarf, again, depending on what, you, what material you're using, we can offer slap band or scraper type conveyors. Um, we also have uh, a high chip removal system as well if you're doing a lot of aluminium work. Um, we have extended accuracy packs to make the machine even more accurate than it, than it sort of leaves the factory as standard. So there's various options you can add to the machine, but the standard machine is very highly specced as well. Because we talk a lot about automation and you, you can add some of the things you've mentioned earlier in this podcast to this particular range of machines too, can you? Yeah, it's available with... with rotary pallet systems, linear pallet systems, so the, there's no end of possibilities with where you want to take the machine to. And maybe just quickly talk us, to us about the differences between those two, the rotary and the linear. What, what do they look like? Well, the rotary is obviously a round system that sits on the front of the machine, which obviously you can stack, so you can go to three levels, giving you up to 15 pallets on the smaller machines, and obviously that reduces down depending on where you go within the range or you've got the linear system which can feed multiple machines with, with different pallet works for lights out manufacturing. It's quite interesting isn't it Gio because we look at a lot of five axis machines and often manufacturers will start with a small machine and then work their way up to bigger ones won't they but what we're seeing here is you've got the bigger machines and now you're coming down to something that's a lot smaller maybe a, a lot faster because it's a lot smaller and a much smaller footprint it's kind of the other way round, isn't it? Why, yeah. Why, why? Just why is that out of interest? Is there a rhyme or a reason? Or uh, I think it could, it, it could be the sectors that they've been associated yeah, I with. I think it, obviously pr previously, obviously we've been into the aerospace, maybe oil and gas, um, but this machine really is targeted at the, at the medical side of things, smaller components, um, small aerospace parts, etc. So sometimes a three fifty or a five fifty can be. A sledgehammer to crack a nut where this machine really is a tighter fit for smaller parts. And also I, physics, I think the, um, the, the G750 with an 800 pallet size, we go to the next machine up, maybe we go to a, a 1000, 1200 uh, pallet machine. Um, physics don't allow us to do our concept at that size. So mm -hmm. going smaller, we can still keep the benefits of the physics of the, the horizontal spindle, the upside down machining uh, with, the, with the smaller footprint. I'd like to kind of congratulate you really on the design of the machines from you know from from the G50 and, and all the way through the range. And it looks to to me like you really expanded on this range to really accommodate for all different markets, all different applications. I think your bread and butter was the automotive industry, but you've seen a gap in the market. And and for me, I don't understand you know why the machines that you've currently got in your range don't lend themselves to more application I think they do quite nicely mm -hmm. we looked at the G50 um, uh, the, the, sorry the G350 today at Love and that, that had a lot of torque for, for a 12k spindle 52 kilowatt I believe Paul yeah um, but I, I, I suppose that lends itself nicely to the work that he does he requires more torque but now you've got different models for, for a multitude of applications based on the same foundation and it seems to be a nice recipe that seems to be working very well for you guys. Yeah, well obviously, you know, it, it does what it says on the tin. It, it's called the universal range and we're now breaking into new markets. Our recent installations have been in medical, we've been involved with oil and gas, we've been involved with food industry, um, aerospace, you know, we, we are trying to break the stigma that Grob are just automotive machines. We want to, the universal is there for a reason. It can be universally used across any sector. And obviously you've seen today with a general subcontractor such as Luff, um, they never really know what they've got coming through the door, but they need a universal flexible machine that they can do those parts on. I always think it, it's a mindset thing, isn't it? I look at the, the inverted table and I think to myself, why wasn't, and maybe someone might correct me in this, but why wasn't one of the first machining sensors made with the table up that way so the swarf would fall away? I, 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 yeah. You know, logic would say to me, when an inventor would have said, well, don't, put, don't have the spindle coming down, <laughs> have the table upside down so the swarf can fall away. Yeah. You would have thought. But, it's a very you know. good point. Um, yeah. Obviously, Grub 
Grub were the first ones to do that, and uh, we're very proud of that. Yeah. I had a great conversation with Carl Downing at Brave about exactly that, Paul, and it, it was a, it was a really great conversation because, you know, barriers to entry potentially for the grob are exactly that. It's the fear of the unknown. You know, uh, it is. You know, it's proven to be the best way to do fifth axis machining. You know, you've got swarf evacuation, better rigidity, faster speeds and speeds. You know, but as an end user, you know, some end users are or get comfortable with what they know and it's you know it's it's only when they need to to kind of get competitive or remain competitive that that that, that they kind of look to, to new technologies and, and new ways but i think is that is although it's your usp is it also a barrier to entry sometimes probably yeah yes it could be um people see the machine as a complex machine um Jason Luff was, was no different. He's seen what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm going up in technology. I'm going up in complexity of the machine. Uh, and our stance with that was you've got us behind you. You've got Grob and the team that we've got behind you. Um, along with the machine, we sold training. Uh, we did training with our application engineers. We got his first part off with our application engineers within the training time. Uh, and, uh, and that was perceived as... Um, a lot easier than, than, than actually it was. Uh, the, the worry went away fairly quickly once that training was done and the uh, the, the machine was shown. Uh, it's not as complex as it first seems, basically. It's a, it's a bit like us walking on our legs and then someone <laughs> going around the corner walking on their hands. You know, they, might, they might be able to go faster than you, but you'd look at them and go, what are you walking on your hands for? You know, but it's just because you're used, Perception. To, you're used to doing something in, 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 uh, in a certain way, aren't you? Um, we're, we're running out of time on this, but what, one of the things I wanted to just um, maybe ask yourself, Lewis, because you weren't there with us this morning, but um, what's your expectation for Grob products, including the ones we've spoken about and um, your current range to to impact on the UK market like you've seen at, at Luff? I know, you know, times for everybody at the moment within manufacturing are not as good as they maybe were a year ago, but you must still have some target that you believe an inroads you can make with this technology in the UK market, let's say within the next two years? Yeah, I think within, within the next two years, Paul, uh, we see more and more universal machines coming into the UK. Um, it does seem as though the, the name is getting into the market now. People are more aware of Grob, more aware of the Grob products and more aware of the Grob benefits that we, uh, that we offer. So uh, within the next 24 months, I would think our, our sales should continue to rise. Uh, and also um, our, our workforce probably will do as well uh, in, in, in reflection to the, the machines that we've got on the floor. Does that mean that Paul's targets have just gone up? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Would you agree with that, Paul? Not the fact your targets have gone up, but what you can achieve here in the, in yeah, the coming year. Yeah, the, the possibilities are limitless, to be honest. You know, everybody that's using a Grob machine is, is very happy. I see the support that the business offers um, from applications and service and support backup, um, we have a lot of happy customers out there, and we'd sure like some more. And yeah. we don't, we don't have many customers out there that have got one grub machine. So the majority of grub users in the UK buy the first one. Uh, the technology sells itself; they buy the second one, uh, and the service support that we can offer as well backs that up. Yeah, I even heard you hundreds in one place, which we won't mention the name, but that's a uh, yeah. Yeah, we've we've got not not so far away from our office here. One of our biggest installations, over 120 spindles. Right. Wow, incredible, good stuff. And before we close this podcast off, um, gents, can you tell us about uh, an event that's happening? Um, maybe yourself, Lewis, um, at Grob, that people can find out in more detail about some of the products that we've spoken about today. Yeah, we've got our virtual open house uh, between the 15th and 19th of March, obviously this year, um, with live seminars. Uh, technical specialist live for, for consultation and also the launch, the actual launch of our four axis machine tool range. Okay, and if someone wanted to register for that, is there a link on your website or they Yeah, yeah, just go to the Grob website, there's links all there, or contact us at the office and we can we can make registration for you guys. Okay, good stuff. Well um, yeah well that just about concludes it for today's podcast. Uh, I'd like to again uh, once again thank you guys for um, hosting us today, not just here at your headquarters but actually seeing a 
a grob machine in action, a very happy customer at Luff Engineering this morning. We've obviously conducted all of our activities safely today and in accordance with uh, the government guidelines. And um, yeah, thanks again for accommodating us. It's been a, a really good, enjoyable day. And good luck with more of these machine sales going forward and good luck for achieving your targets. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for joining us on <laughs> today's podcast. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Thank you. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.